welcome to Polish with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be sharing with you a brand new collection from Bees Knees Lacquer from Blood and Ash. Before we get into the polishes, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. That lets me know you like my content and Bees Knees Lacquer too. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe before you go. I upload new live swatching videos every week. So this collection is an eight piece collection. It includes five beautiful shifty pastel multi-chromes, three of which include that gorgeous red to black multi-chrome flaky we saw in the Resident Evil Village collection. And we're also getting three gorgeous glitter bombs. Pre-order for this beautiful collection will begin on July 30th at noon Eastern Standard Time and will continue through August 6th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't have them here to share with you, but they'll also be launching some new scents with this collection as well as two new mystery polishes. They're also bringing back a lot of polishes this month and have a pretty lengthy respawn list. If you're not already part of it, I highly encourage you to join the Bees Knees Lacquer Facebook group. It's called Bees Knees Buzz. I'll link it down in the description box, but there I think the week before this launch, Sarah the Maker will post a list of everything that's coming back, all the respawns. <laughs> All right, I've got eight beautiful polishes to share with you, so let's go ahead and get into the swatches. We're gonna start with the Glitter Bomb polishes first. I feel like they're very different from the rest of the collection. So this red one is called The Maiden, and it's described as being a glitter bomb with ruby red and hollow glitters in various sizes. It's gonna retail for $11. So as you can see in the bottle here, this one is just, I mean, all of the glitter bombs in this release are incredibly glitzy, sparkly, just, super blingy. <laughs> the hollow in here is absolutely out of control and you can kind of see up close here that it's got the more like silvery hollow pigments and then it's got the red um, hollow glitters. It also, and you'll see them in kind of my macro shots, it sometimes looks like it has some flakes in there as well. Since quite a few polishes in this collection are more sheer, I'm gonna show you what they look like swatched three ways. What you're looking at now is over a clear base coat, in the center there is over a blurring base coat, and then on the left is over black. And I will leave all of those bases in the description box in case you wanna check them out. As you can see on the first coat here, it is quite sheer. We've got a lot of visible nail line going. That's because it has a clear base, and so all we're looking at is glitter. <laughs> um, I found that this one even built up in three coats on its own had a lot of visible nail line um, but honestly I didn't truly mind it much which I wasn't expecting it's just such a glitzy polish you're not looking at your nail line you know everyone is gonna be so distracted by all the sparkles and the glitz and the bling <laughs> So I'm going in with that third coat now, and don't worry, I'm gonna zoom you in in a little bit so you can see it up close. When I wear this in the future, I will definitely either be wearing it over a blurring base because that is my preference, I think that looks prettier on my nails, or over black, which as you can see is absolutely dazzling. This was the first time I layered it over black, and look at it. Holy cannoli, it is so pretty. Here's what it looks like over a blurring base coat. I really like that effect. It just is very even. And then here's what it looks like on its own. Honestly, not that much different and really pretty too. And here's what it looks like in the sunlight, built up in three coats, no blurring base coat. And wow, look at that hollow. It is so sparkly. Oh gosh. Pictured are three coats of the Maiden with a glitter smoothing top coat, which I'll touch on later, and a glossy top coat. Moving on to its sibling, this one is Princess, which I mean, perfect name for this polish. And it's described as being a glitter bomb with rose gold hollow and glitters in various sizes. This one's also gonna retail for $11. So very similar to the first polish we looked at, the Maiden, but instead of red glitters, now we've got rose gold glitters. I would say as far as rose golds go, this one definitely leans more rosy than it does gold. I see that it's a rose gold but I could see some people describing this as maybe a baby pink glitter um, but it does have kind of a gold lean to it. Application wise this one was really similar to the Maiden. It was quite sheer on that first coat which made it an excellent topper and in three coats this visible nail line was there but it wasn't noticeable like unless you're looking for it you're probably not going to see it. Other people probably aren't going to see it. Um, so how these dry down is I was really surprised since they're glitter bombs I thought they'd be super textured. They actually laid down very flat with a regular glossy top coat, which is what you're gonna look at for this one on the full hands watch, you could still see that they were textured, but you couldn't feel 
the texture. So I would say you have the option with these just to use a regular glossy top coat, maybe a thicker one. Um, but adding the glitter smoothing top coat just adds an extra level of plumpness and gives it a little bit more shine. Here's what it looks like as a topper. Here's what it looks like over a blurring base coat. And here's what it looks like in three coats on its own. On my full hand swatch, you're looking at three coats on its own, no glitter smoothing top coat. And you can kind of see the texture a little bit, but again, you don't really feel it. I would say glitter smoothing top coat is optional based on your preference. Pictured are three coats of Princess with a glossy top coat. And the final glitter bomb in this collection is called the Dark One. It's described as being a glitter bomb with royal purple and hollow glitters in various sizes, and it's gonna retail for $11 as well. So of the three glitter bombs with this release, this one was definitely my favorite. I have a red glitter bomb already. I have a rose gold glitter bomb already, although they are not like these. <laughs> um, I, I really love the sparkle in these, a little bit more than what I already have but I have nothing like this royal purple one. Um, I just thought it was so different and unique and fun. Application for this one was very similar to the Maiden and Princess. It was sheer on that first coat, but gosh, this one was a beautiful topper. I can't wait to show you that up close. But in three coats, it was very sparkly and glitzy. The visible nail line wasn't super noticeable. My preferred way of wearing these is gonna be in three coats, over a blurring base coat or one coat as a topper with a glitter smoothing top coat because I really like that plumped out finished look. And my preferred method of removal is going to be to wear these with a peel off base coat. I did try soaking these off and using just a regular cotton pad and acetone. And what I found was when I removed them that way, I ended up having lots of glitters all around the skin on my nails and they were very pesky and hard to get off. So when I used a peel off base coat, they came off super easy, no muss, no fuss. That's gonna be my go-to in the future. If you're someone who does like to use acetone to remove though, these were not super hard to remove. They did require a little bit of scrubbing, but nowhere near what I expect from most glitter bombs. Here's what it looks like as a topper, so sparkly. Here's what it looks like in three coats over a blurring base coat. Oh my goodness, that is my favorite, so pretty. And then here's what it looks like in three coats on its own. Overall, quite opaque. And here's what this one looks like in three coats on its own in the sunlight. So sparkly. I hope Bees Knees brings us lots more of this finish in different colors. Pictured are three coats of the dark one with a glossy top coat. Now for something completely different, this is the namesake of the collection from Blood and Ash, and it's described as being a peachy pink to yellow to green pastel multi-chrome. It's gonna cost $13. In the bottle, this one had kind of an opalescent look to it, very reminiscent of the Throne of Glass collection that Bees Knees released last year. It was a collection of white multi-chrome polishes that I thought were especially beautiful as toppers. So that being said, I thought this one would be very sheer and should probably be worn as a topper. So you can imagine my surprise when I was totally wrong. <laughs> and this one built up absolutely beautiful on its own in three coats. I did try swatching it on a topper, as a topper on a nail wheel, and I did love the look of it. And um, there's just so much multi-chrome pigment packed in here that I think it really looks best on its own. Here's what it looks like in three coats. It's like a bright white gold in bright lighting. And then you take it into lower lighting. This is near a window inside my house, actually. I like gave this one the whole tour because I couldn't stop staring at it. <laughs> and you can see it shift to green, to pink. It definitely has like a chromey metal look to it and is much more shifty than just a regular shifty shimmer. And then here's what it looks like on a cloudy day outdoors. Just so, so pretty. Pictured are three coats of From Blood and Ash with a glossy top coat. Next up is kind of, I guess, the sibling to From Blood and Ash. We've got a lot of duos and trios in this release. This one's called We Shall Rise, and it's described as being a bright aqua to cobalt to purple pastel multi-chrome. It's gonna retail for $13. So this one, like From Blood and Ash, has kind of an opalescent finish to it. You get a little bit of yellow in there. You get a little bit of pink in there, as well as the gorgeous aqua shift you're seeing right now. And then in lower lighting, you get some cold cobalt and purple too. On application, this one surprised me a little bit. I thought the base color kind of, and I guess it's because it has a more opalescent 
look to it. I'm using that word a lot, sorry. <laughs> um, it has kind of a yellowish base. However, when it's built up in three coats, most of what you get is that gorgeous, bright aqua shimmer. It's so glowy and beautiful. And then as you take your hand into lower lighting, which is what you're going to see in my full hand swatch, you get to see the shifts to cobalt and purple as well. Oh, it's so sparkly, a little bit sheer. I would wear this one in the future over a blurring base coat. Here's what it looks like in the sun. It's like sparkly. It reminds me of like the sun glistening off ocean waters. Oh, so pretty. Pictured are three coats of We Shall Rise with a glossy top coat. And then the last finish we get in this collection is also pastel multi-chrome, but it has added red to black multi-chrome flakes. Woo! So this one is called Murderous Little Creature, which that name so so intense um it's described as being a pastel multi-chrome that shifts green to pink to blue with a scattering of red to black multi-chrome flakes and it's going to retail for 13 dollars. so you can see already in the bottle just how shifty this one is i'm gonna go ahead and say it between these last three i was not able to pick a favorite these last three though are absolutely my favorite from the entire collection they are so beautiful now you may remember these flakies from the Resident Evil Village collection that Beast Needs Laughter released last month. And if you saw my review for that collection, you might also remember that I wasn't thrilled with those polishes because they were extremely sheer. Well, I'm happy to say that these are much more opaque. They're so packed with that multi-chrome pigment that they're almost opaque in two coats. I feel like pretty much fully opaque in three coats, especially if you use a blurring base coat. To my surprise, I actually preferred this one without a blurring base coat. The yellow undertones of my blurring base coat, I felt like changed the base color of this one, which I wasn't a fan of. If I was gonna layer it on top of something, it would either be black, which this is beautiful, or maybe over white. I might try it over white sometime. So here's what it looks like over black. You can see that purple shift, oh, so pretty. And then here's what it looks like over the blurring base coat, a little bit yellow leaning. And then here's what it looks like in three coats on its own. Really, not much visible nail line at all. And people, here is what it looks like in lower outdoor lighting. Whew, I was not ready. I am, even now, I am unprepared for the beauty that is before me. Do you see the shifts to blue, to purple, to red? To gold, maybe? I see some gold in there. Holy cow. This might be one of my favorite polishes released this year. So pretty. Three coats of Murderous Little Creature. Our next polish is just as beautiful. It's called Heartmates, and it's described as being a pastel multi-chrome that shifts from rich mauve to yellow to green with a scattering of black to red multi-chrome flakes. It's going to retail for $13 too. And Sarah, the maker, said that it's like if only you can decide what breaks you and the Asteri had a baby. So I don't have either of those polishes. I wish I did because my goodness, I love this one. And I know those are really popular Beast Me Slacker polishes, um, but yeah, this one is just so pretty. It's got that mauve -y base and then it also shifts to purple. I see some coral in there. And then in lower lighting, you can also see it shift to gold and green as well. In terms of application, this one was very similar to Murderous Little Creature. On that first coat, it is very sheer, but as it continues to build, we get a lot more of that glowy multi-chrome pigment. You can especially see those gorgeous shifts in lower lighting. And of course, it has lots of red to black multi-chrome flakies too. What's different between this one and Murderous Little Creature is with this one, I really do prefer it with a blurring base coat. I don't feel like the yellow undertones of my base really impact the overall color as much. And I did have a little bit of visible nail line with this one in three coats without a blurring base. And of course, wearing it over black just brings out all of those absolutely incredible shifts. It's sparkly and so, so glowy. So here's what it looks like over black. You can really see those gorgeous shifts. Here's what it looks like in three coats over a blurring base coat, really even my preferred way of wearing this one. And then here's what it looks like in three coats on its own. Also gorgeous, but you do get a little bit of VNL. Here's what it looks like in the sunlight, a bright purpley mauve, and then you take it into the lower lighting and, oh, 
gorgeous, gorgeous shiftiness. You get a lot of that mauve, some purple, some gold and green. I think this one is so fun for summer, but really transitions well into the fall. And the fact that it is pastel works for spring too. It's so versatile and just absolutely pictured our three coats of Heartmates with a glossy top coat. And the final polish I have to share with you today is called You Are My Home. Oh, the sweetest name. It's described as being a cobalt blue pastel multi-chrome that shifts sapphire and purple with a scattering of black to red multi-chrome flakes. And it's also going to retail for $13. So out of the five pastel multi-chromes, to me, this one is the least pastel. I'm actually surprised they considered it to be a pastel multi-chrome because it is rich and vibrant um, for a pastel. That's just my opinion though. Um, the base color is absolutely gorgeous and as you take it into lower lighting and especially over black, you get to see a lot of those incredible shifts. Of the three red black multi-chrome flaky polishes in this release, I would say this one is definitely the most sheer. Even in three coats, I could see a lot of visible nail line with this one and with a blurring base, I just didn't love it because the yellowish undertone of the blurring base showed through too much for my liking. Um, my preferred way of wearing this one will be either over black, which you can see I swatched early because I got excited, um, and it's just gorgeous. I also actually really loved it in three coats on its own because it's just a beautiful polish. I'll try this one too over white in the future. I think over a jelly white, it could be really pretty. Here's what it looks like over black. It totally reminds me of One Human Alcohol Beer, please. One of my favorite Bees Knees Lacquer polishes. This is over a blurring base coat, kind of yellow leaning. And then here's what it looks like in three coats on its own. On the full hand swatch, you're looking at three coats, no blurring base coat. And despite its sheerness, people, I love this one. When I had it on, I couldn't stop staring at my nails. It's so glowy and the redness of the flakes really contrasts beautifully against that blue base. I thought it was my favorite, but then, yeah, I, I kept changing my mind. But this one's gorgeous, too. Pictured are three coats of You Are My Home with a glossy top coat. So that's the Bees Knees Lacquer from Blood and Ash Collection. Let me know in the comments which polishes were standouts for you. Do you think you'll be picking any of them up? Did you love them as much as I did? Pre-order for this collection begins on July 30th at noon Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you set your alarms. I know I'm going to be so I can grab some of those respawns and maybe the mystery polishes too. And if you're in the mood to see some more beautiful polishes be swatched, you should check out some of my recent videos. Recently, I posted a video comparing a ton, like 17, I think, red to black multi-chrome polishes. I also recently live swatched and reviewed the new Different Dimension Let's Glow collection. And I live swatched and reviewed my top 10 favorite of all time Bees Knees Lacquer nail polishes. I'll link those videos in the description box so you can check them out in case you're interested. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.